Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda Stevens with Pear Blossom Press, and I've got a fun card for you today. Unlike some of the cards you've seen on the channel lately, this one does not have lights because it's part of the Better Together Hop with my friends at Trinity Stamps and Crafty Meraki. They are having a hop and they invited me to play along and I couldn't resist. I considered adding lights, but I didn't want to. This one is such a cute card on its own. Um, and I wanted to show you how I'm putting this together real quick. First, I'm going to show you the different parts and pieces. This is the new Magic Maker pop-up box from Crafty Meraki. It's a little different from other box cards you may have seen before. I went ahead and cut all my decorative pieces. I cut an extra piece for the back that I've already stamped congratulations on. And then for the box itself, I cut four struts and the main piece out of cream cardstock. To decorate, I grabbed the canopy leaf, and I'm going to show you, I cut it out three times to start, and then I ended up cutting out two more. So if you're going to recreate this card, give yourself four, uh, five of those large leaves. Out of the Festive Delight die set, I used uh, the flower and the cherry stem for the leaves there, because that leaf is really close to the canopy leaves. Um, so that's that was what I chose for that. From Trinity Stamps, I've got the Simply Sentimental Baby Set, the stamps and the coordinating dies. I went ahead and I cut out the shadow layer from vellum, and then I cut the top from gold and two layers of white so that I can have a nice stacked sentiment. And then for the sub-sentiment, it says you're having a, and I embossed that with gold, and then I cut it out with the bitty tags. For the clothesline, I went ahead and I just cut four strips. They're about a quarter inch, a little less than quarter of an inch thick. Um, you can just do that with your trimmer. But for the clothing, it's the Ribbon Rosette Baby add-on set. And I've just die cut those from some different pastel colors and pattern paper. And then I wanted baby socks too. So in the Spin Cycle set, there's a little sock. I cut out a pair of pink and white socks. I'm only gonna end up using the pink ones, um, but just, know that that's available to you as well to coordinate. And then I used this, uh, let's see, special delivery set for the stork. And notice that I cut two of everything. Um, I'm not going to use two storks and I'm not going to end up using the second baby, but I will use most of the decorations a uh, second time because that stork sits out um, in, in the box. You can see a little bit of the back of him. And the reason I cut two babies was in case I mess up because this part is uh, it's not tricky, but it, it's maybe the the part where you could overdo it. Um, that baby has a bunch of little lines that are already cut and scored. And you see those holes? Those are the cheeks. You can use the dye and then just use that as a stencil to add some color to his cheeks. But I want it a little bit softer. So I'm going to start with the eyes and the nose. And I've got a sepia, which is a brown uh, Copic multiliner in the smallest point. It's 0. Uh, zero 05 and I just followed the grooves for his eyes and his mouth and then I want to add a little bit of color that cream color is a little too light and I want a, a little more shading and try to get some of those embossed lines to show up so I'm gonna just ink blend a little bit of I think that's antique paper uh, distress ink and I'm just kind of lightly going over it all I really need to hit are his uh, feet, a little bit of his uh, chin, and his ears, because the uh, the little pink blanket's going to cover most of it. He does have a little bit of hair on the top of his head, so I went and added a couple little lines with that multi-liner again, and then I wanted to add some pink to his cheeks. Instead of using the dye for the stencil, I just grabbed a Q-tip because that gives me a really small area and a real soft pink ink here to just add a little blush to his cheeks. I kind of went under his chin a little bit more there too. And then um, I decided I wanted a little more of that um, skin tone or that brownish color uh, up at the top of his head so the little hairs didn't look completely, you know, it kind of looks like it blended in and goes together. So my plan was, two babies in case I mess up the first one, <laughs> but the first one worked fine. So I'm just going to follow the um, packaging on, on the back of the package. It shows you how to assemble all the different pieces and I'm going to glue this together. You can see I don't need to worry about the baby's diaper because it's hidden in the little pink blanket. 
and then I'll grab the other pieces and start gluing those together as well. Uh, the reason I have the second set is, like I said, you'll see part of the stork from the back um, because this box card, he, he's kind of in the front strut of the box card. So you, you'll see a little bit of the back. So what I'm going to do is just kind of double up some of the major color points. So a second blanket to cover the back of the baby. So he looks like, you know, the, the same thing front and back there. And make sure when you're gluing those parts together, you're going to, for the backside pieces, you are going to add glue to the front of that die cut, just so that it can stack on top of itself nicely. Otherwise it would be reversed. So you can see I'm just gluing the extra pieces to the back here. I want a second cap so that his head is completely covered in case you see the back of it. Uh, the reason I added the legs down at the bottom on the back as well is just so that I would have a third layer. It's kind of a lot of weight of this paper and those legs are, they're not super skinny, but three layers will definitely give me a nice firm um, piece there. For the clothing, the only thing that I needed to do was glue that little, it's kind of, it kind of looks like a drawer pull. Um, it goes on the dress and the back of the packaging shows you how to assemble it. But I cut everything from colored cardstock and pattern paper, so easy peasy, no shading or anything for that. And then I want to show you how I put together the clothes, clothes, clothes line. <laughs> I don't know why that word stumped me. I've got some baker's twine. I've got just uh, four of those little sticks. They're, you can cut those on the trimmer. Uh, they're roughly a quarter inch wide, and I don't know how long they are. A um, couple inches, you won't, it doesn't really matter. The bottom is gonna hide down below. Um, I am gluing two together just so that each side is a little more stiff because it's going to have the uh, twine around it and then it's going to have the clothing hanging from it. So I wanted to just kind of thicken those up a little bit and give them a little more body. So after I glued the two layers together for each post, I'm going to wrap some of that twine around just, I don't know, two or three times and tie a knot. Whatever you think looks cute. Uh, be careful not to pull too tight or you might kind of uh, twist your paper, you know, so just be careful. Uh, you want it to be secure, but not, not so much that it, you know, cuts into your paper. And then we'll just do the other side as well. The reason you see the polka dot paper, that's my background. Um, I want to know roughly how wide, how much distance to put um, between the two posts. So I've got it there as basically a guide. And then I'm going to tie it carefully so that the string wants to kind of go you know, from left to right, right to left, that kind of thing. So it's not fighting itself. And then when that looks good, I will trim off the extra from both sides. And I know that that's a good width. Now I can glue on the clothing and I'm just taking a couple um, dots of glue. And this is my Barely Arts glue instead of the PVA glue that I was using. PVA is great for paper to paper, but for um, plastics or for like the twine here, I wanted to use a stronger glue and the Barely Arts is stronger. It takes a little bit longer to dry, which is, it's no big deal. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and glue the clothing on and I'm sorry, I keep moving it up <laughs> on the screen because I want to make sure that the glue is on the string and the clothes, but I also want to make sure I'm not gluing the clothes to my table because then it, you know, it would kind of come apart when I lift it up. So, um, so it just keeps creeping up. Sorry about that. And I realized that my little socks, I wanted to put a pair of socks on that clothing line. They don't fit. There's just not quite enough room. I guess I could have made it a little wider, but it's fine because I came up with a different place to put the socks in the end and I like it better. So I'm just going to go ahead and I flip that over. I'm going to push down on that and I will let it dry. Definitely let the clothes dry before you do this next part. Uh, then I'm switching back to my PVA. That's good for paper to paper. And I'm just going to um, put glue it to my strut. And I'm working on the back side. You can see I brought in the stork. I want to make sure that the clothes kind of stick up a little bit higher than the stork. Um, but not so high that they'll be taller than my box. And then speaking of the box, let's start decorating it. So I'm going to glue the... Um, 
the decorative paper onto the back here. And this is paper from my stash. I have no idea what it's from. <laughs> it's old. It's probably 20 years old. If you don't have something that you like, just uh, use a stencil and create your own. So you saw I put the big piece on the inside. Now I flipped it over. This is the outside of the box and I'm going to put the left and right on. And then this, we're looking at the back of the box at the moment. So I've already embossed the word congratulations. That's from that, um, the Simply Sentimental stamp set, the baby stamp set. And then I need to um, add the decorative piece for the front of the box. So I'm just gluing that on. I like this. Uh, it has kind of a scallop edge to the top of each decorative piece, which is fun. So you can kind of see we've got the uh, all the decorations in place um, for the pattern paper. And then for the back, I glued on three of those canopy leaves. I kind of cut off some of the extras. And then for the strut that is between the stork and the clothing line, it I didn't want it to be plain, so I grabbed a couple more, cut a couple more of those canopy leaves, and I put one on there. It's it's not doing anything except being filler, some more green in there. I think that's pretty. And then for my stork layer, I lined it up, and then I picked them up with my tweezers, and I lined it so that, or I grabbed it so that I knew where the glue line would be. Um, so that's just an easy, easy way of lining them up. I'll flip him over, push him down, make sure he's stuck real good. Um, on those strut layers, I went ahead and I added some more leaves and flowers. Um, I decorated the front with my little, you're having a baby sentiment there. And then it's time to just put this box card together. If you have not made a box card before, they're very simple. Um, this one goes together just like the rest. Um, instead of using glue for the inside, I decided to use my ripping stick. This stuff is awesome. I really like it. Um, if you pull it off and it's not the exact, you know, right angle, just fold it back on itself. Easy peasy. And then you don't have to wait for glue to dry. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some ripping stick to either side of each strut on the glue tabs there. And I'm only pulling it off from the left side to start because we'll glue each uh, tab in place or each each strut in place from the left side and then we can close it up and seal the right side all at once. Now these with four steps, uh, three in the middle and then the front one will go all the way forward. Uh, the spacing works out practically perfect. You could you could probably fit one more in there if you really squeezed it, but I don't think you need it. Um, so I'm just getting that stork layer in there. So cute with that little baby. This is for my nephew. I have two nephews, each having babies. The babies are going to be born a month apart, and both of my nephews were born a month apart, so it's kind of fun. Um, I don't know for sure, but Auntie's intuition says that it's going to be a girl. <laughs> we'll find out next month. But um, I, I tried to make it a little more generic, but there are some flowers. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to add the front strut here. This one you want to make sure comes all the way forward because this is going to seal up the box and you don't want any extra space there. And now for the other side just go ahead and peel off the release paper like i said if if your uh, rip and stick isn't you know perfectly angled to match fold it back in on itself easy peasy and then i'm making sure that those struts are parallel to the bottom so that when i close it up it will all fold back and forth nicely and I really like rip and stick because you do have a little bit of wiggle room. If you needed to move it around, you could pull it up and move it. Uh, I wanted to add a couple decorations to the back and then finish this card off with gems. And I did use, it's the um, Crafty Meraki's Golden Illusion um, gems for those. And I put it on the center of each of my white flowers, even on the back. This card doesn't have any foam tape or anything, so it'll still fold down nice and flat even with those gems. But here's one last look at my finished card. Don't tell my nephew. And then you'll be seeing another card from me pretty soon from my other nephew. 
<laughs> All right, don't forget today's video is part of the Better Together Hop. There's a video playlist, which I will link to at the end. Make sure you hop along with us. There are prizes to win and lots of fun designs to see. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.